Hi there, welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie, episode 291. I'm Julie DiMatteo, the Paper Pixie, coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia. Today is Wednesday, July 26, 2023. Say hello and where you're watching from if you've joined us live. And a special hello to my replay warriors. Tonight I've got a fun fold card and a cute little treat box for you. Here is a sneak peek at the fun fold. It kind of opened, well, can I do this backwards? I think I can, <laughs> like so. Super cute. This was inspired by a swap card. We think it's from Jackie Beers, but we're not sure. But super fun, fun fold with a big, bold sentiment. I love that. And then this is kind of a remake of a box that I've shared twice before. When we get to this, I'll have Brian share links in the live chat to the, a smaller version of this and a larger version. So it's just a cute little treat pouch. I love the shape of it. Um, so that's what we're doing tonight. Brian, are you ready for your cameo? Oh, <laughs> Brian is watching for your questions and comments tonight. If you do have a question for me, please be sure to put a cue before that question. That will make sure that your question gets into my queue when we do the live Q&A at the end of the live stream. We're going to save your questions till the end. That way I can focus on demonstrating tonight's projects for you without interruption. And let's see. When you shop with me, you earn Pixie perks on orders of $25 or more. All you need to do is use my magic shopping link, the paperpixie.com slash shop. And that will automatically apply my current host code to your order. Now, if your order is going to be $150 or more, you want to make sure to remove that host code because you're going to actually earn Stampin' Rewards from Stampin' Up, but you'll also get Pixie Perks from me on orders of that size. So I do have my retired items are finally posted. I'm officially announcing it publicly tonight. My team and my customers have had a chance to shop my retired items. We started out with over 450 items. There's still lots of things to choose from. So the paperpixie.com slash retired. You can shop that. And just a quick reminder, this is from my own personal stash. And if you don't see it in my retired sale, I don't have it any longer. So you don't need to ask me. <laughs> um, but that is also not eligible for uh, Pixie Perks or... Um, Stampin' Rewards or anything that Stampin' Up! offers. This is my own personal sale. So again, the paperpixie.com slash retired and happy shopping for that. We've got everything. I, as many of you probably saw my Facebook post that I had a giant mess behind me. I have made huge strides and this is one of the um, end results of that. So I'm not giving my retired product love. I want you guys to give it some love. So looking for new homes for that. So uh, that's the link. There's also a link in the description if you're watching this on the replay as well. All right, I do have show and tell, but let me give you a quick sneak peek. We're gonna do different colorway tonight, but this is the fun, fun fold. It's a little bit of like a Z fold here, I guess. I don't know, is that what you would call it? But then it also has, it's kind of a Z joy fold. It's kind of a combination of a Z fold and a joy fold. Um, but I love that sentiment. That comes from the Good Feelings stamp set. And then this is the little treat box. It looks like a, he a hexagon when it's closed, but it opens like so. So we'll jump into those in just a moment. Nolan has got some show and tell for you tonight. So Brian's going to attempt to hand it to me. This is the end of his Minecraft build, he has told me. So this is the the one I've been showing you probably for a few weeks. He just continues to work on it. And of course it's so big, it doesn't fit in the screen, but he has been very busy working on that. Our kids still spend quiet time in their rooms, just kind of relaxing and reading. And Nolan usually is making Lego projects. He loves Lego. He starts second grade. I did say seventh last week. He starts second grade um, August 7th and Lily starts fifth grade and who's counting maybe me but uh, I've had a lot of fun with the kids home this summer so we're gonna start with tonight's fun fold cards let's go ahead and do that I've got my measurements in front of me this is different for me but hopefully this will help let me grab my pieces and parts and we'll get started um, I'm gonna bring in the products too let's talk about those really quickly 
So sort of the showcase of tonight's projects is the Delightfully Eclectic Designer Series paper. I've used this paper in uh, past projects. I love it because it really does have a pattern for everyone and it is just such a cool different set of paper. It is a mega pack of Designer Series paper. It's $30 but you get 48 sheets of 12 by 12. So price wise that would typically be more than $48. I want to say it'd be $50 if you were to get four packs of our normal packs of designer series paper. So you're getting basically four packs for 30. So it's a great discount. Um, lots of colors in this. We're also going to be using the iridescent rhinestone basic jewels. These go ignore my double labeling because I've changed up how I'm labeling, <laughs> but I got myself organized. So that's what matters, right? Um, but this goes really, really well with the colorways, so my samples were in bubble bath. This one's gonna have a base of fresh freesia, but these iridescent rhinestone basic jewels go so well with both of those colors. Um, I'm gonna just show this now, but I'll show it again. We're using the Give It A Whirl dies on the 3D project because I love this little stitched heart. And I just always recommend that you look at dies maybe in different ways than you think you may use them. This one has so many cool stitched shapes in it, especially love the scalloped circle here. So take a look at that. That's the Give It A Whirl dies. Um, for the 3D project, we're using Best Family ever, ever for the word thanks. I love the font. And then Good Feelings is what we're using tonight for the card. And I love this big, bold sentiment. So that's a sneak peek at those. All right, so for your card base, I'm gonna actually cut it from a full sheet of 12, eight and a half by 11, just to show you how you can uh, score first and cut once and then you'll have two card bases. I always recommend if you're gonna sit down to create cards, you might as well make two or more because uh, one card is a half sheet of paper, so you might as well get two out of it. So a lot, whoops, I'm gonna use my Simply Squirt. No, just gonna use this. All right, so um, I'm gonna pull out the paper trimmer because we're gonna have to cut it anyways. Might as well reduce the tools here. We're gonna first do a score line at two and one eighth. And then I like to flip the cardstock because we're gonna zigzag this paper. So I'm gonna keep it along the eight and a half inch side and then we're gonna score it at four and a quarter. So those two score lines were two and one eighth and four and a quarter, but I scored them on opposite sides of the paper. Okay, then the next thing we're gonna do is just turn it to the long side, the 11 inch side, and we're gonna cut this at five and a half. And then you're gonna have two bases that are cut and scored, ready for creating, okay? And I'm gonna leave this out because we also have to score another piece. So, like so, all right? While we've got the paper trimmer out, I've got another piece of cardstock. Again, this is Fresh Freesia, and this piece measures four and a quarter by six. And we're gonna go ahead and score this along the six inch side at three inches. So basically scoring it in half. And don't do what I was about to do. I was about to cut. <laughs> I'm gonna move my cutting blade out of the way and score. So this piece, again, four and a quarter by six, scored in half on the long side at three inches. All right, now I'm gonna grab a bone folder and we are going to turn the, so the side that we scored on is considered a valley mark. I'm gonna turn that into a mountain fold. So basically you're folding it the opposite way you think you should fold it. Okay, so we got that piece. Then this one, again, just pay attention to the lines here. This, we scored on this side of the cardstock with that two and one eighth. I'm gonna turn that away from me. And then I'm gonna take the other one and turn it towards me. So we get kind of this zigzag or Z fold going on here, okay? All right, bringing in designer series paper here. And I, this is the pattern I've chosen. Again, this is a great double-sided paper. I love to use patterns that I love both sides, but with the Delightfully Eclectic, you could pick any sides of the paper. They all kind of go together with coordinating colors. So we've got one piece here that measures five and a quarter by three inches. And we're gonna adhere that to the front part of our card here. Then this piece with the polka dots measures five and a quarter by four. Okay, so technically you could do a five and a quarter by seven and cut one piece to three and one piece to four. 
All right. Now this one is directional, so you want to make sure that you're cutting it so that it is in portrait. Okay. It doesn't matter so much for this piece, but if you're cutting from a full piece anyways, this will end up being portrait, but you're going to flip it around. Okay. So let's go ahead and adhere the larger piece to the inside of the card base. Now what I love about the colors in this is they really are eclectic, not colors that I would necessarily put together, but they work. That's one of the things Stampin' Up! is so good at. And I also have to mention, I got to see the upcoming mini catalog today that posted for demonstrators eyes only today at three o'clock and I was literally on my way back from the dentist itching to get home so I could see the catalog and you guys are in for a treat. That uh, mini catalog, while we have to wait a little bit longer, it'll be available for ordering on September 6th. It's so good, so, so good. All right, so while this is open, we're gonna adhere only on the left side of that score line. So here's the trick. I found it was easier to add liquid glue to the cardstock versus trying to guess where I needed to stop on the back of the designer series paper. So um, if you're eyeballing where you're, you're putting the adhesive, you wanna make sure you stay away from that eighth of an inch kind of outside border. So I don't know, I kind of just do it a quarter of an inch. You just don't wanna to go too far. But by putting adhesive on the cardstock, then you know your adhesive's not going where you don't want it to go, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and line this up along the left edge here. And I'm making sure that I've got an eighth of an inch on the top and the bottom and the left of the fresh freesia. Now just by changing the designer series paper, this card's gonna look completely different. And I may decide I don't like it. <laughs> I actually haven't made a sample with this, but I love the patterns here. So then we've got this piece that we're actually gonna have the fold on the right edge, because again, this is gonna kind of create our joy fold here, like so, okay? So first, we're going to adhere one of the basic white pieces, and this measures four inches by two and three quarters. I'm gonna adhere that to the inside. If you wanna to wait to adhere it, because sometimes you make mistakes writing the note, um, you can absolutely just leave it loose until you're ready to write in it. Oops, as I get glue on the edge there. So again, just an eighth of an inch. This is gonna be weird to look at because we're gonna have the fold on the right side. And then before we adhere the other piece, which is the exact same size, four inches by two and three quarters, we're gonna stamp on it first. So I'm gonna stamp in Knight of Navy for this one. And you could use a stamp positioning tool for this. I'm gonna just eyeball it because the sentiment is kind of written at a bit of an angle, so you really can't go wrong with where you put it. And because it's so big, I can see pretty well where I'm gonna stamp that. So with a stamp this big, I like to take the ink to the stamp as opposed to trying to ink it up like we normally would, like so, just because it's such a large stamp. I just feel like I have a little bit more control And then I can kind of look at the stamp to make sure I've got good ink coverage. And then we're gonna go ahead and stamp this in the center as best we can. Give it a couple of seconds to stamp. Oh, that's awesome, Lynn. You're watching me from your flight to Vegas. I love it. I am headed to Vegas at the end of August for leadership uh, or backstage. Gosh, I love this sentiment and font. Sending sunshine and good feelings your way. All right, so now I'm gonna give that a second to dry. Looks pretty good. This is a really quick and easy card. You can dress it up any which way, but with such a bold sentiment, I didn't wanna to add too much to the card, uh, especially with the busy designer series paper we're using as well. Now, if you remember my trick from last week, you could make yourself a little bit of a jig to use. If you want to line this up, if you like, I'm gonna actually eyeball it tonight. I'm gonna flip it over and press down here, just in case there's any ink that might want to smear. All right. 
So what we're going to do is adhere this kind of, it's like a mini card I feel like on the inside. We're gonna adhere that directly to the right side on top of the designer series paper. And you're gonna have about 5 eighths of an inch um, around the edge of that. So if you wanted to, you could do a 5 eighths of an inch kind of corner helper there. All right. And again, I'm just eyeballing it in the center of that polka dot pattern. I'm gonna actually open it and press. And then we're gonna grab the iridescent rhinestone basic jewels. grab a big one here. Just pop that in the corner for just a little bit of bling. And I'll bring up both cards next to each other. Two totally different feelings based on the colors, but the same sentiment. So sending sunshine and good feelings your way. This is how this opens, okay? And then here's this one that I used Garden Green for the sentiment, but see how they look kind of completely different? That is Bubble Bath for the base here, and this one is Fresh Freesia. I just love opening fun fold cards. And this one, yes, it will stand on its own, but again, this interior card's gonna kind of be a little bit floppy. But over time, as it kind of sits, it'll stay a little bit closer knit. Okay, but just a really, I'm showing you that from the top because it's just a really cool fun fold card. I hope you'll give that a try if you haven't already. Kind of different, you got the joy fold part and then you also have the Z fold. Love those two combined. So there we go, all right. So let's go ahead and make the coordinating 3D project. Now this one looks way harder than it is. I hope to make this a little bit easier um, than it looks for sure. Um, so Brian is gonna pop in the chat two different links to, I actually shared both of these projects back in 2018, believe it or not, that was five years ago, that's insane. Um, so um, I, Nadine Weiner from Germany, I think her blog, I think it's stampinclub.de, but she's got really, really cool projects. So I originally got the inspiration from Nadine and um, have kind of pixified it and changed my measurements and such to do a bunch of different sizes. So this one actually uses just a quarter sheet of cardstock. I've got one that's smaller that I actually made for a swap for convention five years ago that held a little, uh, magnet button that I made, button magnet, I think. And then I've made a much larger one that uses a half sheet of cardstock. So this one's kind of in the middle. Would you say it's like the Goldilocks just right? That's <laughs> what it feels like. Um, but so quarter sheet, this is fresh freesia, five and a half by four and a quarter, all right? I'm gonna bring in my Simply Scored. Thank you, Brian. So along the five and a half inch side, and let me get to my measurements so I get those right. All right, so along the long side or the five and a half inch side, we're gonna score this at one and a quarter, two and a half, three and three quarters, and five. I'm gonna rotate it clockwise, and we're gonna score it at one and a quarter, and three and a half. Okay, now we're gonna come back and do a couple more score lines, but we're gonna do some diagonal score lines first. I do have a template to share with you. All right, so here's the template. Obviously it's got, um, it shows where we kind of cut away cardstock, but what we're gonna do are these diagonal crisscross lines first. Okay, and this is easier to do these now, and then we'll come in and do this uh, vertical score line that stops the intersection. We're gonna create the intersection first and then it makes, makes it much easier to do those straight score lines. So I'm gonna be doing the diagonals in the second 
and fourth panels from the left. And I love to use my little Mr. Pen ruler. I've got this on my favorites page. Uh, it comes in a duo. You get a six inch ruler and a 12 inch, but I love this for scoring. And basically what you're gonna do, I'm gonna show you on the template. It'll be a little bit easier to see. We're literally just gonna score from corner to corner if you focus on this rectangle section and then corner to corner again, okay? And I just have to check, is Greg behaving himself in the chat? <laughs> My brother is here, you guys, in case you didn't see that. <laughs> um, so scoring from corner to corner, like so, okay? What I like to do is leave a little space for the ball tip of the stylus. I like to take the ball tip and put it right in the intersection of the score lines, then bring my ruler to it and score. And then, if I could see, there we go. It's a little crisscross there. X marks the spot. Like so. Okay, and you'll be able to see those score lines much better in person when you're doing it yourself. So now I'm gonna bring back the Simply Scored. And line up the five and a half inch side along the top here. Now just keeping in mind, we've got the smaller section here along the top. That's three quarters of an inch in height. Down here is the inch and a quarter in height section. So make sure the smaller ones at the top and I'm gonna come in at, let's see, one and seven eighths, I think it is, yes. One and seven eighths, I'm gonna score down to the intersection of score lines. So one and seven eighths, score down and then stop right where that X, the center of the X. Let's see if I can see that, there we go. Okay, and then four and three eighths is the other measurement. And that's just the halfway point of those two rectangle sections, but that's what it'll look like. Isn't that cool? I told you, way easier than it looks. All right, so next we're gonna go ahead and fold and burnish on all the score lines except the diagonal and then the short ones that we just made. So just ignore those, just do the original ones we did. The diagonal ones will be way easier to do once we bring our scissors out. So that's the next step. I'm gonna bring in a pair of scissors and we are going to keep this top panel on the left, but we're gonna remove the rest of that. So I kind of like to flip it over. This is the panel we're leaving alone here. So I'm gonna cut up the vertical score line just here. And then I'm gonna cut along the horizontal score line to remove all these sections here. So I'm just gonna turn it a quarter of a turn and cut up now the vertical score line on the left and stop to leave that flap or that, cause that's gonna be the flap to hold our little treat box closed like so. So we remove that. If we're looking at the template here. We got that removed, okay? Next, I'm gonna cut up each of the vertical score lines along the bottom, stopping at the first horizontal score line. And again, you know me, I love to cut from the back side. I don't know, my brain can just see the score lines better, I guess, or is it my eyes? <laughs> okay, so we basically released all of those bottom tabs. I'm gonna flip it back over so it looks like the template. And we're gonna remove this lower rectangle and come in and miter cut just slightly. So you'll see on that piece, just cut it at a bit of an angle. And I'm just gonna do a little miter cut up here at the top. This is our little half inch tab that's gonna basically turn this into a box. Now, we're gonna have a little bit of bulk because we are working with cardstock. So I do like to cut away sort of half of the second and fourth tabs along the bottom. So I'm gonna fold back the first and the third to kind of isolate these two. And I'm just gonna turn it and cut. You could use your paper trimmer for this as well, but I'm just eyeballing, just trimming off half of it, like so. Now while we've got those isolated, I'm gonna come in and miter cut those tabs. So, 
get my mess cleaned up here. So now that is looking like our template. The next step we're gonna do is fold and burnish on the diagonal score lines. Now that we've cut those, watch what we can do. I can actually just fold right on those diagonals and burnish. So that's one, and here's the other. Because we cut, I can just fold right on those. Okay, we'll do the same thing to the other two diagonals. So it just makes it really easy to fold those. And then finally, with these straight score lines that stopped at the intersection, I like to take my index finger on the front and then my thumb and middle finger behind it and then just kind of pinch to get that to fold. And because we scored it, the cardstock should do what we're telling it to do, right? Tell the cardstock who's boss. <laughs> uh, that was one of my dad's favorite quotes for me. <laughs> We're doing the same thing there. And that's just kind of coercing the paper. Now before we glue this together, we're gonna to add our designer series paper panels first. And I've got two of those using that pretty tulip pattern. One of these that measures, okay, two and a quarter by one and a quarter. And then this one measures three by one and a quarter. Okay, so we're gonna actually adhere those, get the template out of the way in the panels that do not have the designer series paper. And they're gonna fill those panels completely. I just love the way that looks, because you will see the cardstock on the edges that stick out, so I didn't think that this needed a border. Now I'm gonna bring in the silicone craft mat for this, just in case, because we're going right up to the edge. I'm gonna start with the smaller one in liquid glue. I'm going every which way with my adhesive today. And you just want to adhere that right along the score lines. I love liquid glue because I get to just slide it into place here. Now this is going to be an interesting thing, I just realized, because we picked a directional pattern. <laughs> I'm gonna be weird and do it upside down. <laughs> but technically, um, a non-directional pattern would work with this. Or the alternative here is to, like I did with my sample, cause I made this kind of on the fly. I actually, I didn't originally have designer series paper on the flap, so I added it after the fact. Can you see where there's that section there? So maybe that's what we're gonna do tonight. Let's go ahead and do that. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and cut off three quarters of an inch. Boy, this will really mess up the instructions, won't they? Uh, but I think you understand where I'm going here, and it's because of the fact that um, we are, we've got a directional pattern here. So I'm going to do cutting off three quarters of an inch. Oh, that's my scoring blade. I did the opposite, like so. And that's only if it bothers you that your pattern is gonna be in a different direction. Otherwise, with the three inch by one and a quarter, you could just glue the whole thing and then fold it. You're just gonna to have to choose. One side would be upside down and one would be right side up with the pattern. So we're just gonna do it that way. Um, then we can control the pattern. All right, so then these two pieces end up being the same size, two and a quarter by one and a quarter, and this piece is three quarters by one and a quarter. So this one would be in portrait if you're looking at the direction of the pattern, and that one would be in landscape. That really changes things up, doesn't it? <laughs> All right, so then this one we're going to adhere the opposite way. And I'm gonna adhere it first before we round the corners, because we might as well round the corners at the same time. Now you could also do this box completely in designer series paper if you wanted to as well. I just love the um, juxtaposition of the cardstock with the designer series paper. Like that, okay? So the last thing we'll do is round those two corners so bring in any corner rounder you have. 
I've got the retired detailed trio. Like so. So we've rounded those two corners. So now when this flap closes, just kind of dry fit it here. Maybe it's going to be the pattern's going to be going in the right direction there. Okay. All right, now it's time to glue together. So I've got this on the back side, I've got my half inch section along the left, and I'm going to fold on that second vertical score line from the left, and we're going to put liquid glue along that half inch tab. You do want to make sure you're going to press this flat because we do have those diagonal score lines that we've burnished. I'm going to fold on the first score line from the right pressing this completely flat and that should line up right where we want it to. And you'll see that that creates kind of that box shape. Okay. So now on the bottom where there is no flap, this one's technically the front. So we're going to put that tab down last. I'm going to fold in the two shorter tabs that we trimmed off and put liquid glue on both of those and then liquid glue on this front flap. Okay, I'm going to fold the back over the short ones and then the front over the back and then just kind of pinch. I like to line up all the corners. Liquid glue gives me a chance to line that up right. All right, now I'm going to take my glue bottle, place it right inside the box here. Just adding some pressure on the tabs from the inside. You could use your bone folder or your fingers if you can get them in there like so. Okay. Now we're going to push in where we have those straight score lines, pinch, and then close. And that is going to be, look how cute that is. I love the way that this looks like a hexagon on the outside. And technically it is a hexagon because all of these are an inch and a quarter in length, which I love how that works out with this, with these measurements. Okay. We're going to do a Velcro dot on this and I am actually going to use a half of one. That's a suggestion from a few of you as viewers to save your uh, Velcro dots, which I love the idea, especially on tiny boxes like this. I've got my trusty thin clear fasteners. These are five eighths of an inch in diameter. Again, those are also on my favorites page. And I've already got half of one left, but what I do is I sandwich all the hooks and loops together. They come in two separate strips. I put them all together so I don't have to waste time doing that each time I need it and they're all just ready to go. So then I'll just cut off them as I need them. And I just use my paper snips to cut right through the Velcro dot in half, okay? And then I'm going to take the backing off of the clearer side. That is the hook side. And I did it the wrong, I didn't do it the wrong way, but I prefer to not have my half circle upside down like that. So we're going to adhere it with the circle pointing up towards the rounded corners. Like so, okay. And then I'll pull the backing off of the loop side or the side that's more opaque. And then pinch that and line it up and press. I'm just going to give that a second to stick. Separate the two and then I'm just going to press those in place and I think that looks better like that <laughs> as opposed to the rounded part up first but to each his own, right? All right, so as I make a mess here, let's go ahead. Now, I'm going to show you a couple of things that will fit. I didn't size this specifically to fit things, but I'll show you a couple of treats. And don't mind the designer series paper that's on some of these treats. I don't know. I've got a few things in my drawer here, but I know you can fit two Hershey's Nuggets kind of sandwiched this way. So the way I would do that is kind of open the box and I set the first one in upside down. I don't think it's that big of a deal if the bottom one is upside down, but you do want the top one right side up because of the tapering. And this will be a tight fit, but it does work. So they're in there. It's not bulging too much like so. Okay. So two Hershey's nuggets fit tightly in there. 
Um, a couple of Hershey's Kisses. I tried to put three and I just couldn't quite get them to um, line up in a way that didn't get in the way. So two Hershey's Kisses will fit in there. Um, Lifesavers, peppermints, and the individually wrapped, those should work. I don't know if the Ghirardellis will work. We're gonna try that. I think only one is going to work. Yeah, just one because of the way it pinches closed, but that's a mini Ghirardelli. And I'm pretty sure you can get two of the Dove Promises in there. I would probably put them in. I don't know if you've noticed, Dove Promises are um, kind of different shapes either way. I'd put it where the curved edges are along the sides, and I think you could get two of those in there, no problem. Okay, so just a couple of candy ideas. I know you guys will probably think of some other things to fit as well. But this would just be a really cute pick-me-up. So let's go ahead and decorate it. I'm gonna grab a scrap piece of basic white. And again, we're using the sentiment thanks from Best Family Ever. This is a really, really great set. Technically, these images on the front are 95%, so they're a little bit bigger. I know these are all backwards, but that's kind of the size. And even in the catalog, you only see a little bit of the sentiments. But I love the font on thanks. So let's do that in Knight of Navy. But have some fun looking at your stash with your dyes and your sentiments. One of the things that I love to do, and I'll show you, is in the catalog, once I've kind of decided on a die that I might want to use, most of, if not all, with the exception of the best family ever, um, the stamp sets are true to size. So you can kind of, what was another one I was looking at? Let's go to... This one will work from Lazy Days, I think. So I like kind of taking the die and just holding it in the catalog. This goes a lot faster, ask me how I know, than pulling out your stamp sets and um, holding up the dies. I thought this would be cute for Valentine's Day, the heart with love, that's from Seasonal Branches. But you can just kind of go through your stamps and figure out where things will fit in the dies or punches that you've chosen. So we're gonna go ahead and die cut this. Again, this is from the Give It A Whirl dies. We'll run through that, run that through the, the stamp and cut emboss machine. Having a hard time forming words today, aren't I? I said to Brian at dinner, I'm like, I'm not gonna be able to get my words out tonight. <laughs> One of those days. I love the stitching on this little die set. Look how cute that is. So cute and it perfectly frames the thanks. All right, so a couple of dimensionals. One would work just fine, but you know me and my dimensionals. <laughs> I'll pop that up on the front here. So make a really cute swap too. But I love little things like this, especially for going about your day um, and just surprising people to thank them for their kindness. I'm gonna grab a iridescent rhinestone basic jewel. That's a mouthful for this. <laughs> Where did I put my take your pick tool? Here it is. I'm whispering like it's gonna say, I'm right. We're just gonna pop that right there in the base of the heart. And again, a totally different look. I love the way that those look, but that, uh, what's it called again? The Delightfully Eclectic Designer Series paper. Just love the different looks you can get with that paper. And then we've got our pattern on the back. And again, we made it right by <laughs> trimming off three quarters of an inch from that three inch strip uh, to make sure that the Designer Series paper was going in the right direction. For this one, it doesn't matter. But there we go. So there's those two again, garden green for the sentiment there and Knight of Navy. 
bring in the cards again. So there we go. We've got our fun fold cards and our hexagon, what did I call it? Small hexagon treat bag. All right. So let's go ahead and tee up tonight's Q&A. Give me one moment. Oh, Pat, great question to kick us off. How do I change the putty on the take your pick tool? So um, I'm assuming that you have used up all of the putty that's in your take your pick tool. If you have not, you want to just continue to, now of course I just had it, did I not? Um, somewhere over here. I know it's in here somewhere. <laughs> it's probably right in front of me and I've got my, this one. Nope, it's behind me. All right, so I'm assuming you've already tried um, twisting it and you've used everything in the base. Hold on, let me come back to demo here. So assuming you've used all the putty, essentially what you're gonna do is when you get the new putty end, so hopefully you saw that, I just unscrewed it from the base. So this one, I don't even know if I've ever replaced this one because the putty for me lasts a really, really long time, but you'll unscrew it from the tool and then you're gonna screw in the other one. Now, oftentimes what happens when you get your, when you get your first one, the plunger, I call this the plunger, but it's the part that um, when pressure is put on it, will push on the putty. Sometimes that's just so long, and this is an example of it. Let's say it was out this far when I got it, and this is not picking up the, what do you call those on the screw? The the, it's not picking up, thank you. It's not picking up the threads on here. You just wanna press a little bit, like don't do too much. You can always do more, but press it just enough. Now it's gonna fight you a little bit cause it's gonna start to push some of the putty out, but just enough that you can then catch the threads with the take or pick tool, okay? I do know that some of the new ones, when you get them, the plunger for lack of a better term um, is out a little bit further than this is able to pick up the thread so just press it in a little bit you may lose a little bit of putty out of the other end but that's okay okay so hopefully that helps you pat all right great question Ooh, in your favorites, do you prefer one brother P-Touch over the other? Yes, Lynn. So if I had to pick between the brother P-Touches, the P-Touch Cube Plus is my preferred one because it comes with, you just have so many more options with it. So that's the one that's, I know there's a fly yeah, flying around. <laughs> um, he's taunting me during my live stream. Welcome to Georgia. Um, the Brother P-Touch Cube Plus, it's uh, more expensive of the two, but I can actually create my labels on the computer and kind of design them the way I want to. It's how I do all of my uh, dye labels. So I can control like the frame that I put around it. I can choose the fonts that are on my computer. And then it's um, Brother P Touch Editor is the software. I have a Mac, that fly is driving me bonkers. Um, this will be good for some bloopers maybe. Um, the, uh, goodness, it's like really, now he knows I'm talking about him. Um, <laughs> so you can choose fonts and add frames and such. It's Brother P Touch Editor. It's available for um, both Mac and PC, and I can print it directly to the Cube Plus, either via Bluetooth or wired. So you just have a lot more options than you do with the other label maker. I love the other label maker as well, and it served me well for many, many years. I still use it for really quick labeling needs. Oh, you can only laugh about it on a live stream. Um, but I love the Cube Plus. That was a long-winded answer, but um, the P-Touch editor is, oh my gosh, I'm gonna lose my mind. <laughs> the P-Touch editor is a great software to, to make custom labels. The square part of the die. Um, Yvette, I think you were asking about the give it a whirl dies. So technically it makes a card front layer. I've actually not used these to create, a, I guess it's called a spinner card, but it's a card where you can like spin a dial. It's not a dial. It, it reminds me of like a, um, not a Rolodex, but you spin a circle for different things to pop in the windows. If you look at last year's catalog, there's really great, um, 
uh, pr project samples to kind of show you how the Give It A Whirl dies do, but this has the little finger notch here, I'm going the wrong way, to help you spin the circle behind it to show different sentiments and images and things. It's a really cool set of dies. I've not played with it to do fun interactive cards like that, but that's what that part is for. All right. I do have a question regarding the stamp and storage site. Did you say once that you have a special discount code? There are a few things I've found in your favorites that I'd like to get. Thank you for asking, Lisa. I don't have a discount code, but I do have an affiliate link that's at no cost to you, thepaperpixie.com slash SNS. And I think today may be the last day they've got a magnet card sale. I know that that was going on this week with magnet cards. Those are the magnet cards that I use on all of my die storage. But yes, thepaperpixie.com slash SNS. And if, if you click on any of the links on my favorites page from Stampin' Storage, those will also include my affiliate link as well. I'm waiting for him to like land in my lip gloss and then he's just gonna be stuck there. <laughs> I think we need to name him, you guys. <laughs> um, it's not a fly. No, it's like a gnat or yeah. something. Um, why do they call it a Z fold when it's backwards and not a Z at all? Well, Bobby, it depends on which way you look at it. So technically it's a Z. So in the same way it's an L bracket or like C channel, like you can flip it the other way, but it's named that because. Oh, well, I'm going to show how it's a Z. Let's see. Okay. So if you look this way, so Z, if that makes sense, you're looking at just the card base and not the layers. That's where the Z part comes from. Now, obviously, if you created it the other way and you had your card open this way, that's not, well, it's is that? Backwards. Wait, that but is. That's the same thing with the, like an L bracket. Like, yeah. It's an L bracket, but then if you flip that it That is like a backward Z that way, isn't it? But, but that's the whole thing. It's like, it's an L bracket because it, it's the letter L. It does, if you oh, flip it the other saying. way, like it's not an L, but it's still an L bracket. Yeah, that's a good question. But yeah, that's a backward Z now that I'm looking at it. Not a, this one's the right way. <laughs> it's a, it's a Z shape. Z shape, yes, a zigzag. How's that? <laughs> All right. Um, so the fun fold, Darlene, is, I hid my notes, delightfully eclectic. I love that one. It's the mega pack that's 48 sheets of 12 by 12. Mary, I signed up for two organized swaps. I have not decided if I'm going to do a general swap or not. I'm thinking I'm gonna save myself um, the time this go round and just do the organized swaps that I signed up for. I signed up for a fun fold swap and a 3D swap, so I'll be excited to bring uh, the swaps home to share with you after on after backstage but yeah I'm not sure I'm going to do a general swap just based on my schedule and what my life has been like the last how many months six months or more so we'll see but um, don't be too disappointed if I don't bring a general swap how can you get the card to close completely well there's a couple of things you can do Kathleen you could use a velcro dot you could create a belly band um, you could tie a ribbon around it if you really wanted to keep it to close, if you really wanted it to stay closed completely. Now, um, obviously it'll be closed when it's put in the envelope for the mail. Um, but yeah, it's just one of those things that you could burnish the um, folded edges a little bit more if you wanted to, but it's still going to pop out just a little bit. So um, for photos, I'll typically just use a little mini glue dot to keep it closed. So it looks like it's staying closed on its own, but you'd have to do something like a belly band or um, tie some ribbon or use a Velcro dot or even um, a magnet as well. Let's see. I received five new ink pads, went to use them and got ink all over the stamps. Help, what do I do? So Lydia, it sounds like you're pressing a little bit too hard on the ink pads with your stamp set. So think about it as um, just a little tap, 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 tap. You wanna tap it really lightly. It sounds like what you're doing is um, pressing a little bit too hard in the ink pad. The, the foam pads are really, um, they're soft, and so if you press your ink, you don't wanna give it CPR. You just wanna do a little bit of tap, tap, tap really lightly, because um, you're probably, sounds like you're probably getting the halo edge 
around your stamps where you've pressed the stamp too hard into the ink pad and then ink gets all on the edges. And then if you stamp in the same way onto your card where you press really hard, you're gonna get that halo or that edge where you've got an ink where you didn't want it to ink. So just be a little bit more gentle with um, tap, tap, tapping on your ink pad and see if that uh, gives you better results. Is there a particular reason to fold or burnish before cutting? Would the end results be different to cut first or personal preference? It really comes down to personal preference, Mary. I, my personal preference is to fold and burnish first, mainly because I can see where, I'm, where I need to cut better. Once I've burnished, I can just see it better. Hello, Mr. Nat. Um, and it's really personal preference. Again, um, folding and burnishing is a little bit easier before you've cut as well. When you've cut it, you're kind of like finagling with the folds. You've got a bunch of different extra pieces. I just find it's easier to fold and burnish while it's all one piece. I can see the score lines better and then um, it just makes it easier to cut. So I would try it both ways on a project and see which one you prefer. Um, I prefer to do the folding and burnishing first. Oh, Ramona, a loaded question, not loaded question. No, I have not started my Christmas cards yet. Um, you start... It's, it's oh, you start yours next week. Mm -hmm. I'm impressed. I'm impressed with anybody who starts it before December. <laughs> Because I'm always, if I can get Christmas cards done in December. Now, again, this is personal Christmas cards I'll be sending. I'll be doing all kinds of Christmas projects for you with the upcoming mini catalog because wait until you see it. Oh, my goodness. I've only flipped through it once. I literally, like I said, I was at the dentist. Um, but, yeah, I don't usually, personally, I don't really start my Christmas cards until December. It almost never happens in November, but it all depends on how many we make and if I even have the time in my schedule to get them out. But I know many of you are incredible and you make Christmas cards all year round so that come holiday time, you've already got them ready to go and you might even be starting on them for next year. And I envy all of you that do that for sure. I have not done a truck one, Ramona. I think you may have asked a question about this last week. I did not purchase the trucking along bundle. And right now the bundle's out of stock until the week of October 16th. So I will have plenty of other fun products to play with for everybody. So I know there's gonna be lots of um, inspiration that's out there for the trucking along bundle. So I recommend checking out Pinterest for that for some amazing projects. Oh, how far away? from New Orleans, am I? A flight? Because <laughs> um, I, I did attend New Orleans last August. I don't know what the drive is from Atlanta. It's a hike. It's not a, if you travel to New Orleans, you're going to hop in your car and come to Alpharetta, Atlanta area. But um, yeah, it's it's a hike. I'm not sure what the, what the drive is though. Do we contact Stampin' Up! if we cannot get the mini plates to run through the machine? I'm having trouble and have become frustrated for th oh, three hours is a long time um, and could only get three passes. So um, I don't know if you've seen me suggest before, uh, Evette, but hold on one second. Can I find my mini plates? Okay, so make sure you're trying the E configuration. So see, I've got the middle cutting plate is pulled back. Try that if you haven't tried that already. That should give you a better pass through the mini machine. Uh, if you're still having trouble, consider, oops, I'm showing you the wrong bottom plate. So one, the one plate is the one that you should have the bottom. If you're still having trouble with that one, bring in the three plate. That's the lighter gray one. And that one is just a smidge thinner than the white plate, but you do wanna make sure you're pulling that bottom cutting plate back to create an E shape. Hopefully that, that makes sense. Try that if you're still not able to get it to work, absolutely give Stampin' Up! a call and let them know, okay? Oh yes, Jill, so here's the card we made. Now I always have to do this, hold on, it goes this way and this way. So it's kind of a Z fold, joy fold hybrid. So that's the one we created live tonight. And here's the other version that I created ahead of time. Knight of Navy, Garden Green, both using the delightfully eclectic designer series paper. Just 
So you use the fold as like a cutting guide, right? Yes. So. Okay. So the structure of the paper is compromised if cutting first, making it wonky. Let's see. Um, not necessarily that the structure is compromised. It's just that when you cut, if you think about it, you have a bunch of different little sections now that you have to try to fold. So if you remember at the bottom of the um, hexagon mini treat bag, we had the, actually it was five tabs along the bottom. We removed the one tab along the bottom. You kind of have to fold all four, not separately, but when you, if you fold it before you cut it, you're just folding the one piece versus when you've cut the four sections and you're kind of probably having to finagle with all four to get them to fold and then burnish. Hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. And the gnat is back. <laughs> all right, awesome. That is the end of the questions. Thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. If you enjoyed tonight's projects or learned a tip or, a tip or trick or two, wow. Um, be sure to hit the like, the thumbs up button for us. And if you haven't subscribed, we invite you to subscribe to the channel. And next time you can see the gnat again, maybe he'll be back <laughs> visiting tonight or next week. Uh, we are live every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So we'll be live next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time for episode 292. A quick update for my customers who have purchased or placed an order of $25 or more with me in the last six months. Look out for a special email from me in the next day or two to uh, request your copy of the new mini catalogs. The new mini catalog, I got to see it today. Demonstrators got to see it today. I'll be ordering catalogs on Wednesday, August 2nd. So uh, my customers who are eligible for them will get an email, a special email to request your catalog and you'll be the first to receive it. Brian and I will work our magic and get those packaged up and shipped out to those who have requested them. So keep in mind or keep that in mind and look out for that email. Again, my retired item sale is posted. The link is in the description, thepaperpixie.com slash retired. Shop away. There's lots of great bundles and stamp sets, some punches and dies and a few embossing folders left. I think I do have one project kit left as well. Oh my word. I don't even know if you guys can see the gnat, but I can see it. Um, so again, that's linked in the description. If you have any questions, reach out to us at support at the We look forward to seeing you next Wednesday. Don't forget all you need are stamps, ink, and a little paper pixie. Have a wonderful and blessed week and I'll see you next Wednesday. Take good care. Bye.